Hello, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. He's um, Tarakoto. 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 We're in your hands, Graham. It's over to you how we use the time. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I have three things I'd like to on current looking. First is that trees will not get us to where we need to go. The second is that see we could. And the third is that there's actually a reasonably small amount of work needed to enable that to happen. So first of all, trees. Um, this, this is a tree. We all recognise that as a tree. Okay. I'm not an artist, so if you would go with me and believe that, that this is also a tree. Um, when we cut this tree down after 25 years, we leave about that much of it in the ground to rot. By the time we finish processing it, our tree produces about that much sawn wood. And that potentially is sequestered that potentially long-term cap for the life of the house set. Now, the ETS doesn't make that clear. The ETS actually says that about 55% of the tree is sequestered. But that's not the reality of it. Even if we accept that 55% of the tree is sequestered when it's grown, and even if we accept Scion's most optimistic view that we could plant 4.9 million hectares of new forest, <coughs> That's another 18% on top of the 7% we already have in plantation forests. So totally 25% of our land area is plantation forest. Even then, we can have a standing stop equivalent to about 20 years of our current emissions, and we will have a long-term sequestration from that of probably around 10 months' worth of our annual, so, so our annual emissions. So planting trees is simply not going to get us there. It can't do it. But the zero carbon bill, like the zero carbon bill, like the Climate Change Act before it, says that the only way that you can draw down carbon is to plant trees or change land use. Now that is simply not going to work. We have to change the bill to allow for other opportunities to sequester carbon. Now I put it to you that, that seaweed is one of those opportunities that we should be pushing for. I'm not saying that that's the only thing we should be pushing for, but if we can make a change to the bill that allows things other than land use change in trees, then it will enable a variety of other things as they come along, as they become available. So seaweed, well, Simon says we could possibly plant 4.9 million hectares of land with trees. On the other hand, we've got 410 million hectares of ocean space in our EZ, which we could use to grow seaweed. And not all of it we would use to grow seaweed. We don't need to grow seaweed in all of it, because seaweed is just as productive as any land crop in sequestering carbon. What is more, naturally, carb uh, seaweed gets eaten by things in the sea and naturally sequesters a substantial proportion of everything that's grown into the deep water where it's held for hundreds and thousands of years, not for 25 years of a tree's life, not 50 years of a building's life. So we have a massive opportunity in New Zealand. We have a very large EEZ for our population. We have a climatic range equivalent to Japan, and look what Japan does in Sydney. We have this opportunity to, to use that as a tool, first of all, to meet our climate change um, initiative goals, and secondly, to generate all sorts of things for export. See, we can produce a lot of valuable products and can also meet our goals and enable us to export carbon credits if we do it properly. Now, the changes I've requested in, in the bill are that simply we stop saying that only land use changes and trees can and be used to suppress the carbon. But I've also asked for a series of changes to other pieces of legislation which kind of interlock and which have forced seaweed out of aquaculture for the time being. There really is no seaweed aquaculture in New Zealand except to occasionally cultivate a, a, an invasive species in a very few places. It's just too difficult at the moment with the current set of interlocks between the Fisheries Act, Resource Management Act, and the EEZ Act, and the Biosecurity Act to some extent, to, to get seaweed into cultivation in New Zealand. And so I'm asking for some very small wording changes 
to remove some, what I think are inadvertent blocks that have been put in the way, which prevent C reductive torture taking off. That's my sufficient. Thank you. Can I just ask, yeah. so, uh, uh, I'm the uh, Coromandelian pig, and uh, the Coromandel actually is one of the longest coastlines of any electorate in the, in the country, and we have quite a, an extensive aquaculture sector operating already. And I remember uh, a couple of years ago uh, visiting um, a professor of nutrition from a university in the United Kingdom came to visit, uh, looking mostly at our mussel farms and oysters. But he was uh, very surprised that we weren't farming kelp. Um, and you've sort of answered my question because the, uh, he couldn't believe that we weren't already doing it. Um, and so you think the, the roadblocks to preventing um, uh, kelp farming are legislative rather than yes. structural? Or legislative and regulatory, yes, yeah. that's right. And so is this the right bill to be making those regulatory legislative changes in, or should it be? Where, where, do, you, where, where do you start? I mean, there are several bills, se several acts that need to be changed. Yeah. The only way you do that is by having a bill before Parliament which allows these other acts to be changed. If we were to pick them off piecemeal, we still wouldn't get there. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, Maureen and Graham, I just wanted to ask, uh, given the cost of time, um, I mean, are you aware of how ocean acidification impacts seaweed? Yes. Yep, could you explain that for us? Well, so, so seaweed is, a, is an absorber of ocean acidification. Mm -hmm. Essentially, all the carbon that's drawn down by the seaweed in growing mm -hmm. is carbon that's extracted from the water mm -hmm. and, and makes the sea less acid. Thank you. So, so locally, a seaweed farm has a good effect on the acidity of the water. Mm -hmm. It restores it to more and more. Mm -hmm. I would also point out that every region of this country has the ability to benefit from this. This mm -hmm. is a resource. Mm -hmm. Although there are different species of seaweed in different places, and you only grow what grows naturally, mm -hmm. every area of the country has a benefit.